Welcome to Stories in Focus. My name is Eloise Schottler. I'm a storyteller and the host on this program. And if you've been here before, you know that in focus means that we have a guest. One that I'm really happy to introduce to you. Her name is Lucy Blankstein. And so we're here to tell you about a wonderful new project that we have done together. Lucy, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me, Eloise. It's really a pleasure to talk about the project that we've been doing together. Exactly. It's um, called Voices from the Washington Women's Arts Center. And we have gathered stories from people uh, who were artists at the Washington Women's Arts Center, which was at 1821 Q Street for years and closed down finally from, uh, oh, what was it, eight, 1987? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and uh, we were members in the early years, um, and so we had the delightful pleasure of seeing the whole uh, center grow into quite an entity in the city of Washington, D.C. Yeah. So when this show, which I hope you won't miss, there's a wonderful catalog. It's called Latitude, and it's at the American U Museum in the Katzen Building at American University over on Mass Avenue, celebrating uh, the contribution that the Washington Women's Arts Center made to the art world here in Washington. 96, 96 I artists? I think so. I yeah. think that's the yeah. number. We even have a good back here. You know, so, and there's a history written in here, and the me meeting that Lucy and I went to in August, everybody was talking about how this was going to be done, and this and that, and the idea was introduced. I did it. I said it. Where are the stories? And that hadn't been thought about. So Lucy and I, have worked together before, and we offered to create those voices because a painting on the wall is wonderful, but a voice of a person talking to you about their experience can bring something to life. I found that, didn't you? Yes, I found it very interesting because we resurrected all our memories from that time, and not only our memories, but the memories of our, uh, well, video ease as <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. And uh, it was quite an uh, endeavor because when Eloise said, well, we'll do this, <clears throat> I um, uh, said, oh, sure, you know, I'll help. <laughs> and then we realized we had to do things like edit and learn a whole other uh, uh, mechanical uh, video type of uh, uh, thing. <laughs> the truth is we didn't know how we were going to do it. But that's what had happened at the Washington Women's Arts Center. Many of us did things we never knew that we could do or would do. But let me tell you, hold up your camera now, Lucy. We are the iPhoneographers <laughs> because we took the movies that are on the website Voices uh, and more dot com were all taken with the iPhone and then Lucy has become an incredible editor. Well it was quite something suddenly I had the power <laughs> to clip and nip things up <laughs> so it was like doing a collage and uh, that's what we felt that uh, this was a way to enhance the stories that people had to, to tell. And we chose a list that were the elders, that we are elders ourselves. Lucy was the executive director at one time. I was executive, you know, that those responsible positions floated around, and we did them uh, for a year. And we started back with the older. We have people on these videos that are 92 through the 80s, 70s, and there's one or two 60-year-olds yes. in their 60s, <laughs> because that's where the story was going to get lost if they didn't have a chance to speak. 
Yes, and I think it was very interesting to imagine all the things that could happen in a small space in a basement. Uh, and uh, it, it uh, was uh, in, infused with enthusiasm and excitement and originality, not only through our artwork, but for the things that we learned to do. Right. One of the people we really wanted to have, you remember, was Josephine Withers. She was a founder. Uh, she was a professor at, at the University of Maryland teaching feminist art and all things. And I didn't know everything about what Josephine has done, so I called her. And she wanted to be part of this film. She lives in California. So she did her own. She, too, took up iPhonography and sent us the clips and then Lucy edited them back together. And through that, we found out that the center was in 1821 Q Street because it belonged to her family, and they rented it to her at a fair price for the center to start there. They're just things that you gather when people tell you what they did and they tell you the story. Was there something, there were things that we were finding out all the time. Yes, it uh, makes the experience much more, uh, I guess, uh, normal for people to see it's not just, as you said, hanging something on a wall, but expressing the feelings that the people had at that time and why it was that they wanted to contribute to this videography that we were doing. I remember Ronnie Tuft saying, and she's had her 90th birthday, and she was saying that the Washington Women's Arts Center was strengthened her, matured her, as she looks back on it. That's quite something. This was a story uh, that was repeated many times. There was a thread running through all of these videos that was not just about being at the center, but the kinds of things it did for people uh, after they left the center uh, in the years that, that uh, came. Uh, well, and there were jobs to be done at the center. There were things that uh, we needed to have photography, we needed to have photographs taken, we needed to have this done. Ann Congdon took over taking, making all of the catalogs that the center had with their shows. And we just anointed her as a um, artist, a designer. And in her film, she says, you know, once you're named, then you have to live up to it. And I think that happened to all of us. Right, and it was interesting to know about the kinds of tools that they used at that time because they were limited as to what they could do in terms of showing pictures or bringing pictures into a catalog, how expensive it might be to do those kinds of things. And so they used uh, typography to make it work. Right, and look what happened to you. I mean, you, we took this job on to said we would do it, and then you taught yourself how to edit. And you had never done that before. Right. You know, here we are all with these smartphones, and they can do so many things if you really think about trying, because we're all a little bit frightened about this technology. And so it was that uh, we really utilized this uh, for quite a nice um, experiment. Well, every time I would ask you, how are you doing that? Because I was not getting along as well with my editing. And <laughs> you said, I just fiddle around. Right. Is that what you would recommend? Right. As I heard from my kids always, you know, it's just uh, something that you can do. Just keep trying. Don't keep asking me questions. <laughs> yes, no. Haven't I told you that before, Mother? And uh, the whole project was so much fun you know, that we laughed a lot and shared our memories, and then listening to other people's memories just strengthened my own, made, my, made me remember more. I think that's true. And uh, I think people really thought how important this organization was to the community. That was something that I hadn't really thought about as much. Right, that, that finally that was connecting and that the show uh, that Francois Yohalem curated 
and uh, the art department over there, the director of the uh, uh, museum, Jack Rasmussen, and uh, Christiane, you know, his assistant uh, director. I'm sorry, Christiane, I can't remember all names. I'm just falling down there. But they supported this so much and brought let other people come in right. with their ideas. And the Alpha Initiative, which is highlighting the uh, groups of arts uh, from the D.C. community and the area in around the Washington, uh, D.C., um, has been a very uh, useful and wonderful addition to the museums in this uh, town. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so there's just so much. And when you look back at it, the Washington Women's Arts Center for us was like a family. And so one of the things that we wanted to say to people was, if you have an iPhone, if you have a smartphone, what would you do with yours? Well, I think one of the nice things is just start taking pictures. And then uh, if you're really into it, then you can teach yourself through um, YouTube and um, other ways of uh, taking a class here and there, but it can be very simple. And uh, you put together something and then send it to us at, <laughs> at uh, Voices and More right. and share it. We're collecting uh, stories from other members of the Washington Women's Arts Center. Or if you weren't a member of the center, why not? And let us know if you're an artist. We are interested in women making art. That's one of my great interests is women. And we're going to show you a demo. One of the films, right in a few minutes, uh, Sarah Stout is a sculptor, printmaker, who lives here in North Chevy Chase, Maryland, just down the road. And we went to her studio. That was a great studio. A beautiful studio. And it's amazing that she can turn out some of the most beautiful, delicate things as well as working with rocks and things that one wouldn't think about. But she's been very involved with the uh, environment. And uh, so it's very exciting to see the melding of both her interests. And in the 1970s, when she first came here, and joined uh, the Washington Women's Arts Center, she took on a very tough job with the slide registry because one of the things that was formed was a slide registry where we collect the slides from member artists and people could come there and go through the image and what they were looking for uh, was somebody that wanted a show or they wanted to buy or something. So it was a way of providing for uh, women to become more active in the business of being an artist. So stay with us. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education? What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Well, you know, I said that we would be back and we'll be showing you a film, uh, Sarah Stout. But I'd like to just tell you, how many do we have? I believe we have 18. We do. 18 films that we made with uh, members, who, people who've been members of the center. And we photographed them in different places, in their studio, um, in their dining rooms. Lucy, we used your dining room. We certainly <laughs> we did. We certainly used your dining room. And we moved around wherever they are were. And four of those people are out of town. Um, three in California? Right. I think that's correct. Yeah. And then who's the one from New York? Uh, Abby Steinglass. 
So they wanted to be part of it when they heard about it, and it got to a place where all they had to do was send what they had done to Lucy, and she was the fixer. And for that, you'll see how successful that was. Let me introduce Sarah Stout. We moved here in 1975 from Wisconsin, and I didn't know anyone, didn't know any artists, so I signed up for the open program at the Corcoran, which was just great. And um, that's where I made notes of my friends, and um, I'm sure that that's where I heard about the uh, Women's Art Center, which had just begun in that time. And um, there were lots of other things starting up at the same time, the WPA and so on, that um, it was a very, very exciting time. And uh, I had been involved <coughs> in a uh, cooperative gallery in, in uh, Madison, and uh, so I was very interested in a, an art center where people, where the artists work together, putting the shows together, and um, the whole process I thought was very interesting. At the center, I was mostly involved at first in um, exhibitions, and I entered a lot of them. I was uh, working in sculpture and printmaking mostly, and uh, it was a wonderful opportunity. And it was a wonderful opportunity also to uh, be working with the other artists putting the shows together. I mean, I thought that was very educational for all of us. And, um, I became interested in the slide registry, which was starting up. It had been going on for a little while, and uh, that was probably my main involvement after that. Was uh, And... Um, Abby Steinglass had it, had it very organized, and uh, we had the registry to look at artists, and then they had uh, a place where people could, if they're looking for artists to do design jobs of some sort, th things like that, uh, they came uh, to the slide registry. And Abby had to move out of town, so I just sort of took over from there. In, in Washington, there were so many new galleries starting, new art centers and so on, that people were looking for artists to fill their shows and uh, they were just looking to see what was what was out there. So we had lots of requests to um, show the slides and uh, it, was, it was so good for the artists because they could make their own decisions about whether they wanted to accept any of these invitations or not. And um, uh, it, it was really, really a very um, special time, I think. And a lot of people benefited from it. We also uh, did fi uh, find some small art jobs for, for the artists. And uh, the, the service was completely free. And uh, the artists made their arrangements with whoever was hiring them by themselves. So that, that was a very good service, I think. We did get a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to uh, publish a directory of the women's slide registries across the country. So we had, uh, you know, from a, quite a number of states, um, the slide registries, all the contact information, and so on, and, and uh, we published those and distributed them around, and uh, they, it was in a form that could be easily um, reproduced so that people could send it out to, to their own registries and members. This is the uh, slide registry directory that we published. We had a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts for that, and uh, there are 14 states that are represented, and some of the, of the um, states have many slide registries. We have all the contact information that anyone would need, and uh, this is easily reproduced. Um, at the time, uh, I was working um, on printmaking, uh, etching mostly, and uh, sculpture, but my sculpture uh, was um, I think what they called it then, soft sculpture, and, and they were um, uh, fabric 
uh, mostly quilted and fairly puffy. And so that they did have a shape and they were, uh, you know, hanging on the wall. And most of the ones I did were in white. And uh, they were, they were um, shadow pieces so that um, there was a, a different sort of interest to them, I think. And they were fastened to the wall and sort of draped along the wall. So, um, and, and then, you know, I, I went into other things too, but uh, that was one of the special things I did at that particular time. A lot of influence on everyone, uh, mainly because we were starting a, a business, starting an organization. Uh, it sort of was educational, if I think, for practically everyone, of what the responsibilities were and what, uh, uh, requirements were to, to have uh, an operation like that going and how you had to keep it going. And uh, <clears throat> we had a wonderful place, I thought, right in the center of everything. And um, so I, th I think that that was very good background for many of us who then went on to responsible jobs. and. Uh, I, I think you know it just it just gave us more uh, background, and we were able to uh, take advantage of opportunities that probably we might not have done before. And I think that that was true probably for everyone. One of the the vistas in the uh, center that I always enjoyed was the back door there was a little there was a little almost patio with a tree in the back and um, it was so lovely and, and and I think the the shows we had in the spring we always had flowers and we always had things it was it was a very um, <clears throat> it was a time that we could we could also arrange the the environment just the way we wanted every time I walked past that, 1821 Q Street, I think about the center and I, uh, what a wonderful place it was and uh, it, it, it was really a home place for a lot of us and uh, I think enjoyed it a lot and uh, I always wonder who lives there now and it, it, was, it was, I think, um, gave a focus to the organization that, that we might not have had otherwise. It was exciting to sit here and share these things, you know, and then top it with the video that we took in Sarah's studio. Well, it was really splendid because so many of the uh, people who were in these videos really came through and made it very special for us. They did, yeah. One of my favorite films is a woman named Sandra Rochelle. And we did it in her living room. And she's so natural, so real, you know, who uh, developed all the programs for the workshops. It was a huge amount of work. And she kept on the, the eight years. Yes, and she was an artist in her own right. And so she really had an understanding of what would make for excellent programs, not only about the arts in, that were being shown uh, at the center, but for other kinds of subjects, such as learning how to show your art, uh, how a lawyer, uh, what you needed to do <laughs> in the law to yeah. make these yeah. things. Uh, Copyright and whatever. Yes. Well, it was just fun to hear that, you know, where, where that all came from. And um, the experience of asking people for their stories, there's not enough that we can say to people about become an iPhonographer, you know, not just for your kids, but especially for the elders in your family. Take those stories home rather than wait around for the year that you'll say, oh, gee, I wish I'd taken my phone when I went over there. You know, it's well worth it, well worth it. Um, what else were we going to tell them? Come to the show. You won't believe it. The gallery is gorgeous. The show is hung so beautifully. And its name is... Latitude. Latitude. 
I don't know where that name came from, but it's sort of funky, you know, latitude. And what's the address? Where is it exactly? It's at the uh, American University Museum at 4400 Massachusetts Avenue. And it's not far from the Circle uh, and Nebraska Avenue, so it's not a difficult place to get to. No, and there's a parking lot in the basement. Exactly. Coming off Mass Avenue. Exactly. You know. So there's always parking. And uh, the museum is uh, free so that you can uh, go back and forth as many times as you wish to because it's quite an extensive exhibition with all the artists. Well, it is. And it's so well worth. And, you know, we'll just warn you to, to uh, be careful because the shop is full of temptations. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we also want to encourage you to look at our website, which is called voicesandmore.com. On that, there's some uh, explanation essays that Lucy and I put up, and we'll put up more. There's information about all the parts of the show, and uh, there are the films. And we will be adding photographs, casual photographs of the, at the show, at earlier times, you know, the days when we were all young, and we'll put those up. Uh, and what else are we going to put on there? I don't know, but it's been such a great experience that it's going to catapult us into doing many more things in <laughs> yes, the future. Yes, it, it is. Lucy and I have worked often together since the 70s, and we had one show where we, this sort of fulfills that, doesn't it, where we got involved with using digital matter, and so this has just brought that to the head, yeah, really. Yes, it, it's really been a pleasure to uh, do all of this and work with you because I've learned so much not only from our other uh, people that are in the films, but from you, uh, things that I would never have thought of uh, doing myself. Well, I know. It's reciprocity is there. We have laughed since April the 17th, and it's been fabulous. And we thank you so much for coming and listening to our story today and come to AU. It, that show will be there till the middle of August. Don't miss it. This is a tribute to the women of the Washington, D.C. metro area, and we earned it. So please come.